Uh, well, how it started was I was inspired by uh, Makti Esai's work. Makti has compiled a book called uh, Afro Iran, and one of the iconic photographs that we have here has was really what started my imagination really running and saying, okay, this looks like a place in Lamu. This looks like a place on the Indian Ocean coast. And then I found out that Bandar Abbas, which is where he did his work in Bandar Abbas and Minab and other places, he literally discovered um, an African community in a space that often people don't assume uh, that there are Africans there. And if you trace the history, it actually comes, uh, they're there from uh, the 14th century or 15, 15th or 14th century recorded in time, but obviously because of the Dao culture, they've been there since probably 9th, 10th. And that Be movement has been going exactly. on Exactly. That while. movement has been going on for a while. And if we actually look at the monsoon winds, the monsoon winds work one way about four months, another way another four months, and you can trace it between India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bandar Abbas, Iran, the Persian Gulf, and also the Arabian Gulf. And we'll take you as far, uh, well, uh, Hargeisa at the Horn of Africa, that's what we call it, the Horn of Africa. So how it started, the whole idea was, oh my God, these are Africans who are somewhere else. So the diasporic cultures. So how do we get to look at the similarities? What have they transferred in terms of culture? Even when we look, uh, one of the, part of the soundscape that we do have has the czar. Now the czar is a ritual that originated on the eastern coast of Africa, but at the same time, it is found in Bandar Abbas, which is Iran, and it's part of Iranian culture, a southern Iranian culture. So that's how it all started, and Mahdi was so generous with his work, and I decided to, ve to develop a body of work uh, with Don and uh, a Kenyan artist, a Kenyan photographer called Migwa, and that's how we came up with the exhibition. It really is around looking at the similarities within the Indian Ocean coast so that we can really speak about identity and culture and movement. Because what happens is, because historically we have this notion that because the British colonial gave us a history that's maybe a hundred years old, but we have been existing for for much longer, exactly. And these are the stories that we're trying to capture. So that's how it came about. And this is this exhibition, Found Footage, is, um, you can say, a preface to all of this because it's just a beginning. And one of the things that I'm really interested in developing is more collaboration with different photographers, different media makers, so that we create something that's really substantive. The experience has been wonderful. Nyambura first came to me just as someone who could be on a panel with them at the BIEA and to talk about my research, which is uh, to do with the Indian Ocean. Uh, as a space, I look at people who move from Africa to Asia. And it's been wonderful because then later she said, do you have photographs? And so I donated some of the photographs for this exhibition. One of the things that's wonderful about this exhibition, it has a range of photos. And yet when you look at them, they all seem familiar. So when you go, let's say, to Pakistan on the coast or to Iran or even Sri Lanka, there'll be things that are so familiar and you'll think you're in Kenya. So that's the funny thing about the Indian Ocean, like all the space around it look pretty much the same. And so that was, that's also, I like this exhibition because it brings that out. You don't know where the photo is taken. You don't know if this one's India or that one's Iran or this one is Kenya or that one's Zanzibar. I liked it because I think also the idea of Afro-Iran and some knowledge about people who went there as opposed to people who came here, I think is rare, right? We don't have that much information about it. So I really like the opportunity to talk about it and the opportunity to, you know, think with other people who are interested in that topic. This is uh, one of my favorite photos. Um, and yeah, the reason being is the story behind it. Sauda, um, this is a little girl. She was 12 years old at the time. She loves football and um, she still does play football uh, and it's interesting because she's a girl and traditionally you wouldn't think girls would be so passionate, especially at that age, passionate about football. Um, so yeah, so I was walking on the streets of Lamu and I saw her play and I approached her, me and my team 
and we asked her if we can photograph her and she said yes we can but she we have to get permission from her brother because that's who she stays with so we walked to a house not far away from this area and we asked the brother if we can photograph her and he said yes we can and so we walked just around we found a nice area where she could play and i just wanted to capture that the moments of happiness that she has you know playing football because that's what she loves to do and um, it's interesting because as i was photographing her uh, a lady in a buoy buoy as you can see just walked by unscripted nothing she didn't know what was going on and it brought about such amazing contrast in time you know she's young uh very con- very um newly dre- newly fashionably dressed you know with a a jersey and and trousers and then behind her you know re- here represents an elderly lady from a different time wearing traditional um you know buoy buoy and you know so that contrast between the new and the old really sold this moment for me i don't believe so no I don't necessarily think it's a question of erosion culture is di- it's a dynamic thing so it's yeah. constantly changing because you'd see for example and as Nyambura has spoken about you're looking at these things that are supposed to be in a sense distinct cultures and yet you're blending these images together and you're seeing so many common areas and so I don't think we're really in a space where it's being eroded so much as it's open to a lot more influences and so the changes might be happening a bit faster or even as highly we're able to we're more attuned to the changes that are happening but it's not necessarily an erosion i think it's just kind of um the ki- the natural evolution of culture how culture is made in a sense because it always just emerges out of those changes you look at something like swahili culture which history will tell you emerges out of the exchanges between people coming in from the arabic world from the areas around india sri lanka coming to trade they're mingling with the bantu communities along the east african coast and then you coming up with the language that has everything from hindi to persian to arabic exactly. so I, German, i don't yeah German, so really i don't think it's an erosion it's just it's we an ex- it's an evolution and we are we are fortunate enough to exist in a time where because of you know the technologies we have the level to which our awareness of the world has developed we are more attuned we are kind of observing those changes and recording them more often what i would like to see more in terms of studies of the indian ocean i'd like to see more people from east africa from different communities traveling to talk to the communities in asia because we often talk about only the swahili but there were many people who moved and traveled so it would be really nice to see what what if someone was from a different community would they recognize something there and how to see what people did of their culture in another place the found footage is a beginning it's the first exhibition in the series of 6 so we have excuse me we have about 5 other exhibitions that we're working on developing and because of all the people that we've brought on board now it's going to be extremely interesting to see how that evolves